Not all the skills you need to succeed in the workplace are listed in job descriptions. Many basic job skills deal not so much with technical or clerical issues, but with people skills and personal qualities that enable you to fit in, get along with coworkers, and do well in the process. These skills include professional behavior and ethics, communication, leadership and teamwork, problem solving, organization and time management, and research and information management. You can refine most of these abilities on the job, but your employer will expect you to show a good understanding of them as soon as you start work. They're some of the most important skills for building and maintaining a career because they don't just help you to do your job, they help you to keep it as well. Skills and experience count for a lot, but there are other factors that play an important role in your career success. Sometimes these attributes are referred to as character or work ethic. They're intangible personal qualities of professional behavior and ethics that can really make you stand out in the world of work. Professional behavior means being reliable and being responsible. The first step in this process is to be on time. It's hard to overemphasize the importance of punctuality to employers and your own career. If you find this has been a problem in the past, make an extra effort to resolve it now. Get to work on time and make time management a top priority every day. Being responsible and reliable means not only arriving on time, but also managing your time once you get there. Getting the job done may entail creating a timeline and making priorities, like doing the hard assignments first, or breaking up the job into doable tasks. To meet deadlines, you need to work smart, but don't cut corners. Be efficient, but do it right the first time. Having a strong work ethic is more than an attitude. Being dependable and responsible means making a statement through your actions. The message should be, I am here to work. What actions can you take to make this apparent? Take the initiative. Ask for advice on what else you can do and how you can contribute more. Volunteer, but not to get some immediate payback. Take the long view about how you can demonstrate your commitment to hard work. Learn new skills. They'll help you move up the career ladder. A lifelong commitment to learning is the best investment you can make to your career management. Professional behavior also applies to matters of etiquette or manners. Good manners in the workplace are similar to the good manners you're taught at home. How you present yourself and how you treat your fellow workers will say a lot about your value as an employee. Dress professionally. Greet your coworkers by name. Introduce yourself to newcomers and introduce clients to coworkers. Keep a professional attitude at work. No one needs any drama in the workplace. Cool and competent works well in any work situation. And aside from the old fashioned brand of manners, like smiling and saying hello, a new set of professional manners is starting to emerge. For instance, turn your cell phone off during meetings and refrain from texting when you should be paying attention to something else. Or, since lots of offices are environmentally conscious these days, follow company procedures for reusing and recycling everyday materials. And then there's social media websites. While it may have been simple for your parents to keep their work and personal lives separate, it's not as easy these days. Be careful about including coworkers in your online social networks, especially if you tend to post pictures of the wild parties you go to over the weekend. And now that you have a professional appearance to uphold, think before you post. It's a sad fact of life that employee theft and fraud happen in the workplace. Many companies lose millions each year from these illegal activities. Some go out of business as a result. Dishonesty is a workplace reality. Illegal and unethical activities can range from lying about a sick day or stealing office supplies to serious crimes such as embezzlement and computer hacking. Sometimes an ethical dilemma can present itself without much notice. You must make a split-second decision about what to do. Think about ethical issues before they arise. 
Be prepared to make the right decision. Sometimes career-defining decisions happen fast, so think ahead and decide what you stand for. Professional ethics is a personal code you need to live by every day. Be honest and ethical in all your business dealings. It'll be good for you personally and good for your company, too. No matter what your profession, much of the working day is spent communicating. Whoa. Reading and writing memos or emails, talking with coworkers, listening to the boss, okay. communicating with customers. For this reason, developing communication skills is a crucial element in your career success. We do not work in a vacuum. Whether you find yourself in a multinational corporation or running your own one-person shop, you need to give, get, and share information. In an information age, our ability to send and receive messages will determine whether we succeed or fail. There are four areas of communication that are important for you to master. Reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Each one is crucial in the workplace and for your career development. For a worker just starting out, there's no more valuable communication skill than listening. Listening is what we do more than any other transaction, and listening skills will help you grow and succeed at your job. When you ask things like, how do I do this? When does it need to be done? Why does it need to be done? Be sure to listen well. Listening skills are especially important in service industries, where the customer comes first. It's not enough to be skilled. You have to communicate with your client. You have to sell yourself, sell your service. You have to make sure clients are getting what they want. Here are five tips for effective listening. Don't interrupt. It could lead to lingering resentment. Save your comments for the end instead. Don't jump to conclusions. Listen carefully to the whole message. Don't judge the messenger. Put aside any bias you may have based on age, appearance, or how a person talks. Don't be self-centered. You need to put yourself in the shoes of the person speaking. And don't tune out. Instead, try to pinpoint the parts of the message that are most crucial. To be a good communicator, you've got to be a good listener. Writing is a crucial skill for any business person. Through writing, we can transmit concrete ideas and have a permanent report to refer to later. The act of writing itself can help fine tune our ideas before we send them out in the world. Writing should be a way to send a clear message that doesn't waste time and gets to the point. You need to write with a purpose. Before you write, think about your purpose and how you plan to carry it out. Do this in one or two sentences. Sometimes your purpose is to explain some workplace action. Other times it's to persuade someone to take some kind of action in the future. In either case, it's important to focus on the message you want to get across and be mindful of the person you're writing to. Use written communications to concentrate your ideas and to help initiate the intended actions. Always try to remember the four C's of good writing. Have a clear purpose in mind before you write. Be concise. People are busy, so less is more. Make it compelling. Put the important information up front. And make it correct. Check for typos and errors before sending anything out. A lot of business writing today is through email. This is also business communication with a purpose. So make sure you keep your message professional. Use a subject line that summarizes your message. Keep it brief and to the point. Avoid emoticons. Always review your message before you hit send. Proofread for typos. In a business setting especially, make sure when you put something in writing, you won't regret it later. Good writing isn't worth much in today's workplace if good reading skills don't go along with it. One of the advantages of the written word is that it gives you a permanent record to refer to. Therefore, it can make sense to hold on to important documents, read them with care, and refer to them later to make sure you understand and are acting on the information contained there. This is especially important if the source of this written information is a boss or supervisor. Public speaking is another area where you need to develop your communication skills. Public speaking is scary for a lot of people, but often you can't avoid it. It can sometimes be the best way to get your message across, especially to a group. It also can be an important skill in advancing your career. Everyone gets nervous before public speaking, but there are ways to overcome your nervousness. Realize your audience wants you to succeed, and use your extra energy to create an enthusiastic delivery. 
There are various tips to make public speaking work for you. Research your topic and practice your delivery. Know your audience. Know where their interests lie as well as what they know and what they want to know. Hook your audience early with a story or anecdote. Finish strong with a conclusion that sums up the purpose for your presentation. Group meetings are essential in the workplace. They're where everyone can contribute and where decisions are made. It's also where your writing, speaking, and listening skills all come into play. Meetings are sometimes places for expressing disagreements. It's okay to disagree if it's done in a professional manner. And it's good to get everyone involved. The bigger problem may be when people are not involved enough. A meeting is just a lot of wasted time if people aren't listening. To make a meeting work, prepare an agenda. Limit the group to interested parties. Keep the discussion focused and active. When leading the group, speak with energy. Listen to all comments and include everyone in the discussion. It's a good idea to summarize the decisions made and the duties that have been handed out to make sure everyone is in agreement. Meetings are a useful way to make decisions and get your team on the same page. Properly structured and executed, business meetings can be a valuable use of everyone's time. Teamwork is something all of us have been a part of in school. Whether it's a group project in science class or competing in sports, teamwork is a necessary component. And teamwork is very important in the work world as well. There are construction teams, manufacturing teams, brainstorming teams. In each of these, the group works together on a common goal. They depend on each other to communicate and get things done. When you get to a new job, it's likely you'll be directed towards some group assignments as well. In today's workplace, teams are more important than ever. Increasingly, many projects and services are too complicated for a single worker to handle alone. Companies are also breaking down the separation between managers and frontline employees, meaning more coordination is needed. The effectiveness of workplace teams can affect profits and employee satisfaction. To be a successful team member, you have to work well with others. But what does this mean exactly? People skills are a big part of teamwork. To be an effective part of a team, you need to interact with other workers on a continual basis. That involves communication skills, flexibility, having a positive attitude, and putting the team first. In the workplace, you'll find many varied personalities and skill sets. In order to get the job done, you need to turn individual actions into a group objective. Teamwork doesn't mean everybody has to be friends, but you need to be professional. Personal differences are put aside to accomplish business goals. Teamwork requires constant monitoring and communication. The plan evolves and changes with changing circumstances. There must be an understanding and an agreement on how to proceed and who does what. A team is like a machine with a lot of moving parts, but in this case the parts can all talk to each other. A roadmap for good teamwork involves defining specific goals, including all members, dividing the labor, dealing with problems together, and sharing the praise in the end. No matter how clearly the team goals are stated, it takes individual members to follow through on their commitments. Others are counting on you to do your job. All employees have their own personal career goals. It takes some adjustment to put aside those individual goals and take on a team goal where the work and the rewards are shared. But this is one of the basic forces in the workplace putting aside your personal agenda and focusing on the team goals of your company. Teamwork is not without its problems. Human nature does not stop at the workplace. There's still the possibility of laziness, stubbornness, jealousy, negativity, and the blame game whenever people work in groups. Teams often rise or fall together. All will share the victory and if need be, the blame. Teamwork is really important because you can have great skill sets at something but the more that you have other people thinking of different ideas and um, bringing different expertise to the table, it really, it really helps. And it's more fun that way, personally. I like working with people. Um, it's a little bit more social, and um, you have sort of the, the group dynamic versus just working by yourself. Make sure you're a teammate that helps and support group goals, and you'll find it can help you achieve individual goals as well. In any team project, certain individuals may emerge who provide leadership to the group. 
Group leaders are often a major factor in the success of group projects. Leaders help the group stay focused and move quickly. The most natural way to exhibit leadership abilities is to set a good example by working hard and working smart. Leaders build trust through fair treatment to all and by providing support when needed. They must confront problems head on and not be afraid to make tough decisions. Leaders can motivate others, give and take criticism, delegate responsibility, and monitor team progress. If communication skills are important for team members, they're even more important for those in leadership positions. That means effective speaking and listening habits. Leaders, more than anyone in the group, should be considerate of all group members. Being a leader is not always easy. Whenever you're managing people, it's often necessary to tell people what they can and can't do. You'll sometimes have to critique workers. This, too, is a learned skill. When giving criticism, be constructive. Balance criticism with positive feedback. Be specific about what needs attention. Offer solutions, not just criticism. And be timely. Know when to step in and when to step back. There are some people who are born leaders, but for the rest of us, leadership is a skill you can learn. Leaders should always be learning and improving their abilities. One way to do this is to be on the lookout for role models and mentors around you. Watching a good boss in action is a great way to learn how it's done. It's important to understand this evolving team culture if you want to be a success in today's work environment. Whether it's as a leader or as part of a team, Team coordination and personal responsibility are crucial when others are counting on you to get the job done. Today's workplace requires creative workers ready to take on the challenges of problem solving in their everyday responsibilities. In another age, workers were just an extension of the machine, a part of the assembly line culture that had workers repeating the same tasks over and over. In today's world, workers have to be smarter than the machines they work with. Workers are expected to solve all types of problems in the course of their day. You may problem solve on your own or in a team. In either case, there are some skills you can develop that'll make it easier. Problem solving requires attention to your environment, what is working and what isn't. It sees problems as a challenge and an opportunity to improve. Problem solving usually involves new thinking, so it helps to think creatively. Problem solvers also believe they can make a difference. Some workers make it a practice to avoid problem solving. Signs of weak problem solving skills aren't hard to find. In every workplace, there are employees who say, it's not my problem, don't ask me, I don't know how to do that, or they simply go to someone else with the problem. Others go out of their way to find solutions even when it isn't their primary job. From lending a helping hand when a fellow worker needs it, to creating entirely new ways to run a business, individual workers who recognize and solve problems can greatly increase their chances of career success. Being unwilling or unable to solve problems is no longer an option in today's workplace. In competitive marketplace thinking, proactive employees are a necessity. And those workers who cannot contribute will find themselves marginalized or out of a job altogether. So how can you develop the problem-solving skills needed to get ahead? Problem-solving requires curiosity and creativity, bringing new thinking and attitude to the issue at hand. It requires flexibility and the willingness to try something new. And this can be an area where young people excel. Creative thinking is a big part of problem-solving. Coming up with new ideas, thinking outside the box, brainstorming with your coworkers, all of these are examples of creative problem solving. Other workplace problems require a scientific approach where logic and experimentation are often used. Many financial issues like budgets, receipts, and paperwork require math skills. Scientific thinking is essential in many careers that involve complex problem solving. Careers such as biomedical engineers, software developers, criminal investigators, and urban planners. Whether you use science or creativity, both approaches to problem solving work best when you think through a problem in a series of steps. First, identify the problem. Then, define the goals and objectives. Come up with some possible solutions. Then develop a plan of action and follow through. 
For problem solving, just as with any other task on the job, follow through is essential. Be accountable for your part in the solution, learn from your mistakes, and celebrate your milestones. Problem solving is often a journey into the unknown. There are no guarantees that you're on the right track, so you must always monitor your progress to make sure you're on the right path. Some people on the job avoid problem solving because they're afraid of failure. Others charge headlong into fixes without doing sufficient research. Others are simply short-sighted in their thinking or too afraid to make the effort. Problems can be turned into opportunities if confronted correctly. By building a reputation as a problem solver at work, you can really increase your market value as an employee. Whatever organization you work for, it's always a good idea to get organized. It's a valuable skill when you work with other people or when you need to organize your own time and space for personal goals. Some people find it hard to get organized. They work harder and longer and still don't seem to have enough time to get the job done. But sometimes the answer is to work smarter. So let's get organized. You've probably already learned some organizational skills in school, where you juggled homework, outside activities, and maybe even a part-time job. You figured out a regular routine to fit all these in and stuck to it. It was all about managing time, and the same applies to work. We've talked about how arriving to work on time is one of the first responsibilities for any new employee. But being on time also applies to your work responsibilities once you're there. Meeting deadlines and doing what you say you're going to do are crucial goals for any job. Very seldom is a manager going to tell you from this time to this time I need you doing this, from this time to this time this. There's a job to be done and they're going to expect you to know how to manage that project. It often seems there's never enough time. But if you can learn to manage the time you do have, it'll make your life and your job a lot more pleasant. If you have clearly defined goals and a plan to achieve them, you'll be well on your way toward time management. Living without a plan, you can bounce from one urgent demand to another. Modern life is filled with distractions and all of them seem to need your attention right now. So you have to make choices. List all the activities that require your attention. Set priorities, putting the most important activities near the top. Figure out the amount of time needed for each. Once you have priorities, stick to them. And the best way to do that is to have a written schedule. Setting priorities won't mean much unless you have a plan for carrying them out. Scheduling is crucial in a work setting where people are counting on you to deliver. Rather than depend on memory, write down your assignments and when they're due. Have a scheduling book handy at work and at home, or use an electronic device that you always have with you. It makes good sense to break big jobs down into a series of intermediate deadlines. Often this means developing a to-do list at the beginning of each week. You can then break the list down by day or even hours within each day. You can create these schedules individually or with a group, and your boss may like to be included as well. Consider sharing the schedule with those who would benefit from it. Once you have your schedule in place, you can find other areas of your working life that could use some organization. Start with the world around you. Avoid cluttering your workspace. Figure out a system where you can organize your work materials, putting away what you don't need so you can find what you do need. There are always tempting activities at work that chew up time but never seem to help get the job done. Using your cell phone at work, uh, checking your personal email, on the job, on the company computer, uh, socializing too much. These are all things that waste time and could ruin your reputation because there's always somebody watching. If, if nothing else you remember, remember that there's always someone watching. Some people feel that they don't have enough time for time management. Drawing up daily, weekly, and monthly schedules cuts into the time needed to do something right now. But the time you take each day to set your priorities and manage your time will pay big dividends, giving you a more focused and more organized life. Know how to manage your time and you'll find you can manage your way to success. We call this the information age for good reason. 
Computer-based information systems have changed the quality and quantity of information we deal with each day. The Internet has millions of sites for gathering and processing information, and we're bombarded by more every day, whether we want it or not. It's important in the workplace to sift through and process information and avoid communication gridlock of email, voicemail, text messages, and faxes. Not all information is created equal. It's essential to evaluate information as it comes in to judge which sources are timely, accurate, and relevant. We gather and process information every day. But with this avalanche of sources, the need to evaluate, sort, and store information has never been greater. Workers today need to be able to analyze information for their own use and be able to package it for presentation to others. There are many high-tech research tools available in the workplace today, but there are still traditional methods that remain useful. First-hand observations and personal interviewing are valuable ways to access information close at hand. The local library is a great source of reference materials such as encyclopedias, atlases, and bibliographies. You can also find newspapers, magazines, and professional journals. Every step of the way, you'll need to make decisions about the value and validity of these sources. Can you trust the author? Is the information relevant? This kind of evaluation is even more crucial on the Internet. The web is an up-to-date, all-inclusive library to the world, but you need to carefully consider the reliability of your sources. Be able to detect commentary or an agenda in your sources. Even primary sources need checking. Opinions need to be identified as such. Focus on your research goals and narrow down your findings to those that will help in your company's decision-making process. After researching and evaluating your information, you need to organize it in a way that allows you to access it on demand. Much information management today involves computer programs. We have moved from the Rolodex and filing cabinet to the computer. Keeping track of information in some kind of systematic fashion includes creating electronic text files that can be easily edited, databases for contact information, and graphs, tables, and spreadsheets can be created with financial data and manipulated to project different outcomes. All this information can be organized for easy retrieval. It's important to create a retrieval system where you can access a program at various stages of development, computer files where you can retrace your steps, Always maintain backup files for safekeeping as well. Maintain a good file management system for yourself so that you can easily find information. You can easily make changes knowing what the original document or the original uh, file contained. So a simple file management system that you can easily work with and build upon. Once you've researched and assembled your data, Often you will be called upon to present this information to individuals or groups, and the methods you use will depend on the type of information you want to communicate and the audience for that information. These presentations can take the form of an oral delivery, a written memo, or even an elaborate audio-visual display. For oral presentations, it's important to speak loudly, make eye contact, and be prepared to answer questions. Don't try to cram in too much or the audience will lose interest outlined three or four main points. For written memos, start with a content summary. Make the text concise and easy to follow. In more elaborate documents, a working knowledge of graphics is useful. You can vary the appearance of the document with bullet points or bold text. Information in today's marketplace is becoming visual, and there are evolving on-the-job technologies that are useful to present all kinds of data visually. This technology is not an end in itself. Its use is dictated by the type of data presented and the kind of audience you're addressing. It's important to make the presentation fit the data. All of these visual forms can add a lot to business presentations. They can help make information visually interesting and easy to understand. But no matter how advanced the technology, it will still take the analytical skills of people to manage our information overload. Basic job skills involving communication, problem solving, research and organization are attributes employers value highly when finding and keeping employers. These skills are useful in almost any working environment. By developing these basic job skills, you can give yourself a powerful edge in managing a successful career.